Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and this is Count Your Stitches. Thanks for joining me for another video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the front and the back post double crochet to make a pattern called the basket weave. If you need a little reminder on how to do those stitches, go ahead and check out my latest video that I posted before this one, how to do those stitches. I have a little sample piece here of regular, regular double crochets ready to go. Now, when doing the basket weave, you're going to be doing four front posts and then four back posts and alternating that down the row. So you wanna have a multiple of eight chains plus four. So if you wanted to make a blanket size, you would just count out um, chains of eight for your however you wanted the length to be and then do an extra four chains then you're going to go ahead and do a double crochet in the second chain from the hook and double crochet the whole way down to create that base for the back and the front post stitches so i'm going to go ahead and chain two and the chain two um on either side of your project helps create that smooth side and it always counts as a double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the front post and insert my hook around those. So we have three and I need to do one more. So I have a total of four now. So I wanna go ahead and do then four back post The back post can be a little bit harder, so you can always count the taps or you can bend this back a little bit, the ridge that it makes to count. So I have three, and now I have four. So then I wanna do four front post. Two three and four and now I want to do four back post one two and three and four and you're going to do a regular double crochet at the end to help create that nice smooth side that you want to have when you're working on small or big projects. So you can see where the four back posts are and where the four front posts are. Now you want to chain two, which counts as the double crochet. And what you wanna do is you wanna do the front post and the ones that are sticking out and back posts and the ones that look like they're they are behind the project. And you don't have to do this fast. You can go ahead and take your time if you need to. I am just a fast crocheter. So now I'm gonna do four of the back post. And then four of the front. And always make sure that you are not sticking your hook through the post, but around the post. And I'm going to end with the four back posts, just like we did when we worked on the other side. Two three. Now when doing the back post and ending with it, you might have to hold that chain two from the previous row out a little bit so you don't get snagged on it. Okay. And then do a regular double crochet into that top of the chain. And 
and it creates that little ridge. Now to make it look like the basket weave, we are going to chain two and now we are going to do back posts and the ones that are sticking out and the front posts and the ones that are sticking behind. Now you can um, do it every two rows, every four, as long as you are alternating how you're doing it. Sometimes I've done three rows and then changed. So, and I've even done six before. It just creates this, the pattern of it, a little bit longer. But usually I do just two. So we're gonna take our hook and work around the back side of the stitch. Back posting and the front post is definitely a whole lot easier than doing regular back posts at the beginning. So now, since we just did four back posts, we are going to do four front posts. And then four back if I can get my hook to cooperate today and then end with four front post And then of course, do the double crochet into the top of the chain two from the previous round. Now you can kind of tell if your tension changes when you're changing the rows, your piece might curl a little bit. That actually will work itself out the more rows that you do. So we're gonna go ahead and do a chain two again. And now, what we're going to do is we are going to work back posts and the ones that stick back and front posts and the ones that stick forward. So when you're doing this, what to remember is that every other row you are back posting in the back post and front posting in the front post stitches and then the other rows when you alternate, you are back posting in the front ones, in front posting in the back, and back posting in the front stitches. Because if we were to go in here again and change, the pattern would then only be one row. And once I'm done with this, you guys will be able to tell what I'm talking about. And it is definitely a little bit more prominent when you do four rows instead of the two that I'm doing. Ooh, let's see if I can continue to get my hook to cooperate here. And end with a double on the top of that chain two. I'm going to take my hook out to show you guys. You can tell the groups now, and the groups will alternate. And that's what creates that weave look um, with the ridges of the back post and then the 3D effect that the front post gives. So now if I were to continue, I would chain two and turn my work and then do front post in these back post stitches and back post in these front ones and you basically alternate those rows while doing this in your project whether it's a blanket or maybe a hat if you're feeling a little courageous with this stitch that really is all there is to it now if you make a mistake and accidentally do three rows when you're doing four or doing five when you're supposed to be doing four rows 
it's just fine. I've done that before and it's not really that noticeable off the top of your head or the instant look of someone's eye. I actually have a blanket like that and I worked more rows how I did it and I can't even tell where that row is anymore. Hopefully this video was helpful on how to do the basket weave stitch and I hope you guys come back for more videos. Thank you for watching and thanks for all the love and the support. Have a good day.